Hi everyone, in this video we are going to discuss about Amazon Web Services or AWS Global Infrastructure. So we started our discussion from our previous video that uh, Amazon Web Services are some of the services which we can access um, using internet connection or some network connection. So we discussed that Amazon has a, has a cloud computing services running in somewhere in the cloud and so as per definition AWS global infrastructure which we are discussing is a cloud computing environment managed by Amazon and uh, we can actually get a portion of that cloud or we can uh, subscribe for some of the services offered by AWS so we will be given a virtual private cloud VPC and in that VPC we can have some services running maybe we can have some virtual machine and then we can get connected with that virtual machine from our browser and by using some network connection so on this website we can see that this is the global infrastructure of Amazon and uh, Amazon for providing services to its clients they have actually divided uh, the the whole world there where they want to in provide services so that is divided into some geographic regions so we can say that AWS global infrastructure is divided into geographic regions here and uh, those geographic regions are further divided into availability zones so now I have taken this uh, I mean image from Amazon website I'll show you this on Amazon website that how this geographic regions and availability zones are divided Okay, so now to show you the AWS global infrastructure, I am on their website and you can see here this is the AWS global infrastructure here and I'll share the, the, this link in the description section. You can see because they keep updating it as well and you can see his AWS global cloud infrastructure spans these many availability zones and these many geographic regions. So they have at the moment this is 30 geographic regions around the world and those 30 geographic uh, regions are further divided into 96 availability zones and they say that there is a plan for 15 more availability zones so now you can see here on this uh, on this on their website on this picture you can see this is beautiful animations here and you can see now to provide uh, services to different clients in different regions of the world they have divided this world into different regions so let's say in, for example in Australia you can see here in Australia like they have uh, in Melbourne there um, uh, this is coming soon for Melbourne and here you can see this is a Sydney which was launched in 2012 and, and this is actually a region and in that region we have these many uh, availability zones you can see there are three availability zones and for Melbourne it shows that it's coming soon and for here the Auckland it also shows that it's coming soon it means they have planned for this and now rest of the things you can see here in Beijing we have they have like um, a region and in that region they have the availability three availability zones and then we also have in this here and then you can see is all these regions how they have divided here and yes this is AWS gov cloud that is for maybe for government and this in that this is they have launched this uh, this in 2018 and this is availability zones there are three so now you got an idea that to provide services to different users in different corners of the world they have divided the world into different regions and every region is further divided into multiple availability zones so we will discuss that what availability zones are in, in our uh, slides and then you can see here further and uh, this link is really interesting you can go through these links for further information and I will be get, go back to our PowerPoint slides so we discussed that this global infrastructure is divided into geographic region and the, those geographic regions are further divided into uh, multiple availability zones there and uh, now just for illustration I'm going to show you that let's say we have taken uh, some portion of this AWS cloud where we have we are showing maybe only two regions so we saw there are multiple regions just for an example let's say we have taken a slice there from there and I'm going to show you here that let's say this is one region maybe in US maybe other region is let's say in Australia so we have shown these two regions and in those regions we need to have availability zones so you can see this AZ, AZ these are different availability zones and now within those availability zones we have data centers so now these data centers are the physical servers for storing data 
these are the physical server where we can create virtual machines or we can store our data so you can see now this is thing this is the thing from where like we can have some realization that uh, these are different regions in different countries in different countries they have their availability zones in availability zones they have their data centers in those data center we have the physical machines which are being shared uh, among the user throughout world so this is this can be one region and then let's say we can have uh, and then yes the distance can be so in between the distance in between these availability zones can be 100 kilometers and in the same way we can have availability zones in other regions it means every region has availability zones and every availability zones have data centers in it and data center has the physical machines in it and now the minimum availability zones which which we can have in a single region is two but we can have further multi multiple availability uh, zones in a single region as well so for example for example here we have shan shown that there are two availability zones but on the right hand side in that region we have three availability zones and uh, you can have even more availability zones let's say and now a data center can have of course many server physical server and uh, the characteristics of these availability zones are that they are they are physically distinct independent infrastructure and they are connected with each other so these all availability zones and you can see here these are the connection in between those availability zones so all of them are connected and they have they have backup power supply so for these all data centers in, in it means they all availability zones they have backup power supply it means if one power supply one source of the power supply fails then they can have some backup power supply and they have their own cooling system as well now we have discussed somehow what the regions the phys physical or geographic uh, area throughout world and then we have discussed the availability zones we have the data center where we have the data centers and there is another concept a further concept related to that there is, these are age location and regional age cache so now to discuss uh, uh, the idea of age locations let's say suppose that we have some website hosted in some specific country let's say here we have our website and now if you want to access that website let's say from sydney then you can see that this can be far away and for the data to be or for the request to go from this to website and come back it may take some time so that is actually referred as latency and this higher latency may be uh, may be not advantages and may not be preferable in some of the application for example some banking application or something so in this case there will be a latency and to to solve this problem for the users to provide them a better user experience they have actually created uh, they have uh, uh, proposed the uh, use of age locations so age locations are used to cache frequently accessed files on server located closer to those to the users so for example if there are some of the users in the sydney and if they want to access some of the contents which are somewhere here which are very far away and they are introducing latency so in this case they can actually retrieve those contents and they can actually store or they can save those contents here somewhere in some age locations so it means age location have the contents which are frequently accessed but they are actually present in somewhere else in the origin server they are only placed in a cache memory to improve the user experience and to maybe reduce the latency and now there are more age locations than regions and availability zones to provide i mean to give better user experience and in addition to that we can also have regional age caches so these regional age caches are used to cache contents which are infrequently accessed and it has more cache so in this case for example for some after some time we realize that those contents are not being accessed so for some time they can place those contents in their regional edge caches so they will have more a memory uh, and to make place for maybe the recent in demand contents here in the age locations and i'll show you this also there in uh, on their website as well now i'm going to show you on their website the concept of age locations you can see this is uh, related with cloud 
front so we'll be discussing about this cloud front in some other future video but you can see here in north america they are showing that these these are some age location and these are some regional age caches exactly in the same way in europe they have given the details of age locations and regional age caches asia so now you can see that how many age locations are there throughout the world and i'll put that this link in the description and last point which i want to discuss is that how we select region so for example when we want to deploy our website somewhere or maybe we want some virtual machine somewhere so how we select which region should be selected so regions are selected on the basis of different criteria first criteria is services so it's not the case that all of the services are available in all of the region so let's say some of the region will have different service some other regions will have different service so it means as a user if you are looking for some specific service and if service is, is not available here then maybe we need to go here in this region so in this region we need to create our our account we need to deploy our service i mean so first region is uh, availability of the services in that region and the second is we can also maybe bound because of regulatory regulatory requirement regulatory requirement means for example if i if i'm in australia and as per maybe their guidelines if i'm bound to deploy my services only in my region then i'll only be selecting regions which is available to me maybe sydney so in our case maybe regulatory requirement may impose some things like on the uh, on the selection of regions we may be bound because of these government requirements let's say and then latency so as i mentioned that to improve user experience we would like to have lower latency so lower latency means we need to select some of the regions which should be closer to our users let's say our users are in australia then we need to uh, deploy our services in the regions which should be closer to our region so that's the third criteria and maybe some of the criteria of course is the cost so some of the regions may be cheaper than other region so for example if we don't care of uh, about any all these things and we are only concerned about the cost then we can see that which region is providing us uh, maybe uh, better rates so that can be uh, one of the other reasons to select a specific region and uh, i think that's uh, it what i wanted to discuss today in this video and thank you thank you all for your time and hope to see you in some other video on cloud